distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Major General Michael J. Talley, Commanding General, U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence, and the presiding officer for today's ceremony, welcome to the retirement ceremony in honor of Colonel Deborah A. Chapel. I am Lieutenant Colonel Kayla Ramotar, your narrator for today's ceremony. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors, national anthem sung by Anthony Banks, and the invocation by Chaplain Michael Spikes. <laughs> stripes and the bright stars through the path roll as by or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Good afternoon. Please join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are gathered today in recognition of the retirement of Colonel Deborah Chapel, in celebration of her 30 years of service, and with due recognition, we applaud and celebrate her faithful and humble sacrifice to our nation. Our gratitude and appreciation extends to her family for their support, fortitude, and perseverance throughout her career. We are indeed grateful for the blessings you have provided through Colonel Chapel, for her contributions to the Army Nurse Corps, and for the enrichment she has brought to the Medical Center of Excellence as we strive to conserve the fighting strength of our nation. We humbly ask that you would grant Colonel Chapel and her family the rewards and blessings of a peaceful and satisfying retirement. May their futures be filled with joy and contentment, and may their path of transition be smooth and made even sweeter by your grace. Father, we offer this prayer of praise, gratitude, and petition for our valued and beloved comrade and fellow servant. Amen. Please be seated.
Thank you, Sergeant Banks, and for that beautiful rendition of the national anthem and Chaplain Spikes for the touching invitation. We have several guests, family, and friends with us today. We would like to acknowledge our distinguished guests, the Commanding General of Medical Center of Excellence and host for today's ceremony, Major General Michael J. Talley. Mr. Joseph Holland, Deputy to the Commanding General Medical Center of Excellence. Celebrating this monumentous occasion and here with Colonel Chapel is her family, her spouse, Mr. James Chapel, daughters, Hannah Nicole and Macy Jane, son, Philip Cooper, granddaughter, Adeline Grace, parents joining us virtually today, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Philip and his wife, Evelyn DeBolt. Also here with us today are brothers Dave DeBolt and his wife, Susan, and Thomas DeBolt and his daughter, Hunter. Sister Linda Glusenkamp and her husband, Robert, and daughter, Erin Martinson. Thank you all for being here today. It is now my pleasure to welcome the presiding officer for today's ceremony, Major General Talley. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, how do you hear me? Uh, can you hear me on virtual land out there? Okay, I've got a thumbs up in the back. Uh, well, I just need to make an announcement. For those of you that are here to see Jekyll and Hyde, you're in the wrong place. Uh, and for those of you that are online, uh, we're in the theater here at uh, the historic Fort Sam Houston. And uh, outside, I think they've been running a play for the past couple weeks called Jekyll and Hyde. So we just had to turn away a couple and uh, let them know that uh, this isn't exactly the Jekyll and Hyde show. Um, thanks to everyone for coming here today, though. And we're here today to pay tribute uh, to Deborah Ann Chapel, who has committed 30 years of her life uh, to military service, to Army service. We're here to pay tribute, certainly, uh, to her great family. And you heard from the narrator, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Romatar, uh, the family members that are here, and uh, certainly her parents, who are uh, watching this virtually from Decatur, Indiana, which is where uh, Deborah grew up. Um, her great family, uh, her foundation is here. Uh, Jim Chapel is here. Uh, not only her, uh, her spouse, that, by the way, they just celebrated their 30th anniversary back in May. <laughs> but uh, she calls him her best friend, and I'll talk more about their, uh, their story relationship uh, here in a little bit. But uh, eldest daughter uh, Hannah is here. Uh, Macy is here. Cooper is here. And I tell you, uh, when you talk about uh, what's most important to Deb Chapel, she's going to tell you, you know, first and foremost, it's always going to be her immediate family. Uh, and Macy, I'm proud to, proud to say that uh, she's going to kind of follow in her mom's footsteps, uh, continue that, uh, that life of public service as a uh, uh, potentially a police officer out of New Braunfels. And uh, Cooper, uh, aspiring to be a neurosurgeon, uh, he's 18 and uh, he's in high school right now. And I'll tell you, just a wonderful family. Uh, Hannah, you know, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, uh, the oldest daughter holding the family together. They've just been incredible. But, uh, you know, we're here to talk about uh, certainly a little bit about the career of Deb Chapel. You know, why we're celebrating this, uh, this next chapter, this transition uh, in her life as she goes forward. Um, but it all begins, uh, I think it's important to talk about uh, how she how she uh, got her foundation. Tell you a little, about, a little bit about her story, an American story, one that we can all be proud of, that began uh, you know, years ago in Decatur, Indiana, uh, which is where her parents are right now. Uh, grew up in a strong uh, Lutheran Christian family, uh, terrific values. A military family uh, with uh, you know, certainly uh, grandparents that served in World War II, her father Philip, uh, who was listening, uh, was, uh, was in the Air Force uh, National Guard, served as a, uh, as a, uh, as a senior mechanic, and uh, did that for uh, about 38 years. So her grounding in service, her, the examples that, uh, that she saw growing up, were steeped in her, uh, in her own family. Uh, and she can tell you, yeah, it was kind of a small town. You know, uh, the beginnings, the values uh, were very important. I think she said, you know, you can get lost in cornfields sometimes in, uh, in Decatur. But uh, we all, uh, we all uh, had those, uh, those great family values. Uh, Deborah uh, was, an, was an avid uh, volleyball player. And you can guess, uh, because she's from Indiana, what sport do you think she was also pretty good at? 
Basketball. That's right. Home of basketball is Indiana. But let me tell you, in volleyball, uh, they actually went to the state final uh, because uh, Deb was just uh, real well-rounded, uh, quite the team player for sure. Uh, excelled in high school, excelled, uh, you know, certainly as a student, as an athlete, uh, went on to Ball State uh, College uh, right there in Indiana. And she went there really uh, to begin as a pre-med student. But uh, once she got there, uh, she ran into someone who was in the uh, ROTC department, a, a great friend of hers, or became a great friend, and said, hey, why don't you consider military service? And uh, that's what she did. And she went into the nursing program, went through ROTC, and uh, became a commissioned officer in the United States Army Nurse Corps. Uh, first assignment uh, was in Hawaii. And uh, she's working at Tripler Army Medical Center, one of our largest, certainly uh, the largest in the Pacific, uh, working there uh, in the nursing department, uh, worked in the emergency department, where uh, she uh, soon after, I guess within a couple of years after arriving to Hawaii, uh, she met uh, the love of her life, her future best friend, and that was Jim. Well, Jim was in the Navy at the time. and He was in the crypto field you know, working with uh, submarines and that sort of thing. And uh, kind of, uh, you know, a little, uh, little, little sad as to how they met, uh, because you see Jim's uh, best friend's uh, child had been uh, gravely ill and uh, ultimately ended up passing away. And uh, Deb was there uh, working in the, in the hospital, uh, treating the child, and uh, that's how she came into, into knowing Jim. And as he was uh, grieving, uh, really, it was Deb that uh, consoled him. Um, but uh, she actually ended up inviting Jim out uh, to have a drink to help him, you know, kind of get over this, uh, this terrible loss. Uh, Jim accepted the date after dropping off his girlfriend at the time. <laughs> He's a non-commissioned officer. She's an officer. Um, they go out for a drink, and she's like, oh, you poor thing, you know, I'm sorry that, that, that all this happened to you. And uh, the date ended, and uh, Jim uh, continued, he, he got her phone number, which was a win, that was his goal, he set the bar, if I can get her phone number, that's good. And so uh, he stopped her for the next two weeks. <laughs> I mean, he's calling her relent relentlessly, she's hanging up the phone, I don't think they had cell phones uh, quite during this time. But uh, he just wouldn't give up. And his buddies are telling him, hey, man, that's a sugar mama. You need to go after her. <laughs> True story. True story. So he just kept going. And finally, all right, golly, this guy, he's not going to leave me alone. So he went out, and uh, within eight months, you know, the rest is history. And when you think about what Deb has gone through in her 30, uh, 30 careers, 30-plus 30 year career, what military families go through, what the kids have gone through, certainly the families. Uh, she certainly will, uh, will tell you that Jim is the reason she's here today. Uh, he is the reason uh, that she served uh, for all of these years, and that's in addition certainly to her children and her, uh, her wonderful family who are here um, all the way from Indiana, North Carolina, other parts. She's got great friends here, and uh, they're all here certainly to pay tribute and homage uh, to Deb, uh, Deb Chapel, certainly, as we are. Um, but I tell you, uh, after Hawaii, uh, the family moved to Colorado Springs, where she served in the 10th Mountain, uh, or the, uh, the, the 10th Cache, excuse me, 10th Combat Support Hospital, uh, there in Colorado Springs, and you can read her bio and see the various assignments she had. But uh, that's where Hannah and Macy were both, uh, both born. Uh, they lived there for uh, uh, several years. Uh, she worked at Evans Army uh, Community Hospital, uh, honed her skills as a nurse, uh, leadership positions all along the way, really establishing herself and kind of uh, redefining why she served. She came in to help others. She came in uh, because she wanted to make sure that she could help soldiers and their families uh, any way that she could. And she was darn good at it, and she continued to serve. Um, but uh, she had a break in service. If you look at her bio, you'll see kind of a, an extended period of time. And she joined the Army Reserves. So she's a total force officer also. She has served in different compos. She's been a citizen soldier. But while she was out, during that hiatus, if you will, I think that calling, uh, that yearning, that, that, that sense of duty to come back and serve others, it stayed with her. 
We fast forward to around uh, 2004, in fact, uh, shortly before then, and she becomes a mobilized reservist to deploy to combat, which is uh, what she did. That was her calling. Uh, she leaves the family. Uh, Hannah and uh, Macy are about six years old and eight years old, respectively. And uh, Jim steps up, and uh, he takes on uh, what's really a tougher duty uh, than, uh, than what we do in the military. The devil tell you, he gets all the combat pay because of what he had to endure. Raising two girls while she's uh, in Hawaii uh, going through the mobilization process. And she's, uh, that takes 18 months in total time uh, between the mobilization and a 15-month deployment in Baghdad. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what she did. And it was during that time, and I know that uh, there are friends here from that Baghdad uh, ER, if you will, or that Baghdad healthcare facility, uh, Ibn Sina, which uh, is a hospital, uh, our largest healthcare facility in Iraq. It's still there. And Deb, uh, Deb served her country well, um, treating the wounded. And if you think of 2004 to 2007 time frame, that's the height of, of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Deb was right there. There have been books and films written about uh, not just Baghdad ER or uh, stories of the ER, but Deb is actually featured in some of those stories uh, just because of uh, what she was able to do, the team she led. And after her family, when you talk to Deb, and I asked her, why did you continue to serve, though? Come on, 30 years. What, uh, what kept you going? And she said, one, it was that deployment. It was my kids you know, who were part of that uh, emergency department, saving lives. It's those kids that write me Mother's Day cards sometimes and just check in on me. Some of those kids are here today uh, watching this and certainly being a part of this great ceremony. That's just Deb Chapel. That's who she's been. That's why she serves. Uh, she went back to combat in 2014 serving in Afghanistan. Nine-month rotation this time. Again, leaving the family. Jim picks it up, and yet she continues to serve. That's just Deb Chapel. That's just what she does. She does whatever's asked of her. And uh, certainly today, that's why we're here to, uh, to pay homage uh, to, to the great things that, uh, that she has done. And uh, she'll certainly be, uh, be sorely missed. Um, she has served the last, uh, I, I guess, about two, two and a half years as our director for uh, doctrine and training uh, development. And in that capacity, uh, for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with it, she probably tells you she's a spy or something, but uh, she has actually led, uh, led the agency that has written the doctrine for not only the medical doctrine, for not only the Army, but the Joint Force as well. That's the Navy, that's the Air Force. The way we prosecute wars, the way we save lives on the battlefield, it's because uh, of the doctrine. Uh, certainly the, uh, the manuals that are out there, uh, Deb has led that effort. Um, inside of that effort, uh, she also has a Center for Army Lessons Learned uh, type of section. Uh, in fact, Kenton Bass is here and uh, Chad Nelson, you know, her right hand and left hand, and she's got a whole lot of other hands here of uh, folks that are in .D. But uh, the Lessons Learned Department, uh, they're responsible for capturing uh, events as they, uh, as they go on. And if you think about what's going on in Ukraine right now, Deb has sent teams uh, to Ukraine to capture what we're doing so that we can insert that into our doctrine. It'd be the best trained military in the world and uh, save the lives that are going to need to be saved. That's Deb Chapel. That's, uh, that's where she leaves. Uh, she leaves a legacy, uh, certainly, of leadership. Uh, she's the ultimate team builder. And uh, where she goes, uh, she, uh, she motivates and she leaves organizations better than when she came. So uh, tomorrow, you know, the Army's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same because... Uh, you know, Deb Chapel's not here. But I will tell you, uh, we're in good hands because of the legacy she leaves. We're in good hands because of uh, those that she has influenced. We're in good hands, certainly, because uh, she's left an indelible mark on each and every one of us. We're a better army for it, even though we're going to miss her dearly. We're going to miss her family dearly. And uh, I'm just humbled to be able to uh, say that uh, I had the opportunity to serve with Deb Chapel. And uh, there's no higher honor. And uh, it's nothing more important, certainly, than what I do in my day-to-day my -day things than, you know, talk about leaders of this caliber. So, uh, Deb, thank you for your service uh, to your family.
uh, all of you, uh, from where you came from, from all over the country, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for your service. Uh, Philip, Evelyn, I know you're listening in from Decatur, Indiana. Uh, job well done. Thank you uh, on behalf of a grateful army. Thank you on behalf of a grateful nation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Colonel Chapel, would you please join Major General Talley on stage for the presentation of awards? Major General Talley now presents Colonel Chapel with a certificate of appreciation from the Commander in Chief for service in the Armed Forces. Colonel Deborah Ann Chapel, I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment to the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and keep our country secure. You present the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. Colonel Chapel also received a certificate of appreciation from our former commander in chief, President, former President George W. Bush. At this time, would Mr. James Chapel please uh, come forward to receive a certificate of appreciation from the Chief of Staff of the Army? The Certificate of Appreciation from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that Mr. James R. Chapel, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, James C. McConville, General, United States Army Chief of Staff. <laughs> Colonel Chapel will now be awarded the Distinguished Member of the Regiment, and Mr. Chapel will be awarded the Honorary Member of the Regiment. Colonel Deborah A. Chapel is granted and assigned the distinction of Distinguished Member of the United States Army Medical Department Regiment. This appointment recognizes contribu contributions to regimental continuity, traditions, and esprit de corps. By the order of Raymond S. Dingle, Lieutenant General, U.S. Army Surgeon General, and Commanding General, U.S. Army Medical Command. And Mr. James Chapel is granted the assigned distinguished of honorary member of the United States Army Medical Department Regiment. This appointment recognizes his contributions to regimental continuity, tradition, and esprit de corps by order of Raymond S. Dingle, Lieutenant General, U.S. Army Surgeon General, and Commanding General of the United U.S. Army Medical Command. Colonel Margaret Berryman, U.S. Army Nurse Corps, Corps-specific branch proponent officer, will now present Colonel Chapel with a note and coin from the Office of the Chief, U.S. Army Nurse Corps, in recognition for her greater than 30 years of honorable service. Before I present this uh, gift on behalf of the uh, Army Nurse, I just want to say a few short words. Um, on behalf of the Army Nurse Corps, thank you for your honorable service to our great nation. Thank you for all of your contributions to the Army Nurse Corps. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the countless lives you have touched. More importantly, for the lives that you have saved. We are grateful for your service and wish you and your beautiful family much success and happiness in your retirement. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the reading of the retirement award and certificate. Attention to orders. The Legion of Merit is presented to Colonel Deborah A. Chapel for exceptionally meritorious performance of outstanding service, culminating in a distinguished military career as the Director, Directorate of Training and Doctrine, United States Army Medical Center of Excellence, Joint Base San Antonio, Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Throughout an excellent 30-year career, Colonel Chapel's passion for the profession of arms, balance of mission, and commitment to excellence have allowed her to positively impact the Army. Colonel Chapel's contributions and superior performance are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect distinct credit upon her, the United States Army Medical Center of Excellence, the Combined Arms Center, and the United States Army. By order of the Secretary of the Army, this 30th day of November, 2023, signed Milford H. Beagle, Jr., Lieutenant General, U.S. Army Commanding. Attention to orders. The certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America to all who shall, shall see these presents greetings. This is to certify that Colonel Deborah Ann Chapel, having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army on the 29th day of February 2024. Signed, James C. McConville, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff. <laughs> Please take your seats. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I stand guard majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher, my colors a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am loved. And I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, Guam, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, in the Persian Gulf, and a score of places long forgotten by all but those who were there with me. I was there. I led my soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines. I followed them and watched over them. They loved me. I was on a small hill in Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired. But my marines and sailors cheered me and I was proud. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that I have helped set free. It does not hurt. 
for I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is by those I have served in battle with, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and from my vantage point on the moon, I stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space. I have been silent witness to all America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I am torn in strips to be used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. When I fly at half-mast to honor my soldiers, my airmen, my sailors, my marines, and when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the graveside of her fallen son or daughter, I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God. Long may I wave. Colonel Chapel, on behalf of all of the soldiers, non-commissioned officers, officers, civilians, and their family members of the Army Medical Department, past, present, and future, we present you with this flag in appreciation for your leadership and mentorship throughout your 30 years of dedicated service to our nation. This flag was flown over the United States Capitol on the 8th of September, 2023, on the anniversary of your entrance into the armed services. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army's newest retiree, Colonel Retired Deborah A. Chapel. Thank you. Colonel Retired Chapel will now present gifts to her family for their undedicated support and sacrifices. I have people that are actually going to give you this. <laughs> Major General Talley, Mrs. Talley, Mr. Holland, fellow soldiers, family, and friends. Okay. I practiced this. It was five minutes, but I didn't have to stop getting emotional. So, um, First, I want to thank Major General Talley. There were very sweet words. Um, it's been an honor working for you. Um, Ooh, um, thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Ramatar. Um, this has not been a quick and easy process. This has taken many, many weeks, and we would not be here today if not for all the work that she did behind the scenes and making sure that I did what I needed to do. So um, I couldn't have done it without you, so thank you very much. Um, and Master Sergeant Cardin Cardenas, my NCOIC, is around here somewhere. He's a, 
The NCO that we all know as officers, we have those NCOs behind us, under us, helping us, pushing us. Um, and so I have several NCOs here today that I couldn't be up here without either. Um, thanks to Chaplain Spikes for your kind words. And I know him as Sergeant Banks for the lovely rendition of the national anthem. Um, so yeah, give him a round of applause. Um, I actually was in Afghanistan with him and he sang the national anthem at our change of ceremony when we were in country and I was just blown away and when I found out he was stationed here I was like he's got to sing for me so I really appreciate you coming and singing for me. Um, thanks to Colonel Bryden for reading Old Glory and if you didn't notice um, the people up here passing the flag they were all Army Nurse Corps officers representing Second Lieutenant all the way up to me as Colonel, the ranks that I had to go through to get to the end. So, so I, appreciate, I appreciate you guys taking your time out of your busy days um, to come and help me celebrate this great um, moment in my career. Um, as I sat and thought about what to say, it was very overwhelming. Um, I think I could just say ditto to what Major General Talley said. Um, but how do you take one hour, one ceremony to thank everyone that has helped, helped me, challenged me, corrected me, mentored me over the past 30 plus years? I never thought back in 1991, yes, 91, um, that I gave my dad my very first salute that I would be standing here 32 years later. Major General Talley um, met with me and my husband a couple days ago, and he had asked me, as he mentioned, why did I stay in and why did I come back in? Um, I got choked up in his office. I hate to say that that was my first crying spell, probably not my last, but maybe not even my first with every, all the emotions that I'm going through. But I just got choked up thinking about why I came back in and why I stayed in. Um, as he said, it started with a college student looking for money. Um, when I was pre-med, I decided I didn't necessarily want to be in the hospital 24-7 all the time and was thinking nursing and ran into the fellow RA. And he said, hey, we're giving away nursing scholarships. And I was like, okay, where can I sign up? I signed up, um, got the three-year scholarship, and then I called my dad after and I said, guess what I did? Um, <laughs> And so with him being um, career Air Force, even though it was National Guard, he was the Air Force, like that's all I knew. Um, he didn't really have a lot of good things to say about that for me. <laughs> but um, I still think I've done him proud over all these years. Um, but my proudest moments have still been taking care of our wounded soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines. I really have enjoyed this crazy ride um, it was difficult leaving OBC here at Fort Sam and going to my first duty station in awful Hawaii. Um, and I see one of my friends, my dear friends, that we went to OBC together. Um, we roomed together in Hawaii. We both met our husbands in Hawaii. Um, and she retired a couple years ago and lives up in um, Fort Hood area. Um, but again, he mentioned I met my husband there. Um, we were known as... Uh, Dewhurst, Dow, Dodonna, and Diebel. Four of us met because we were in second platoon, um, and we just became great friends and, and have remained great friends to this day. Um, General Talley also mentioned that, you know, the next place the Army sent me was also just as horrible. It was Colorado. So it was uh, really rough. The Army had, you know, Hawaii and Colorado, and people are like, why are you getting such good assignments? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, but while we were there, we had two little girls. Um, my husband had a job he really liked. Um, and at that point, I loved the Army, but family what came first. So that's when I decided to get out and go into the reserves. Um, but again, my unit out of Denver, Colorado, guess where we did our AT every year? Hawaii. <laughs> so it, again, it wasn't a rough assignment. Um, but then I did get mobilized and had to go back there because that was our mission to fill, to fill Fort, um, to fill Tripler if anything happened in the Pacific, Pacific, um, area. 
And uh, I was gone for 18 months. And again, Jim stepped up and took care of, took care of our girls. Um, and I actually um, got pregnant with my son when I was doing that 18 months, um, came home for a Christmas holiday. And, and uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so um, came home, spent some time after I had him, but, but my ter- term wasn't over. So I had to leave Cooper at eight weeks and go back to Hawaii and finish my 18 months. So then I left him not only with two little girls, but a brand new infant. So he really has been um, the rock of not only our marriage, but of my career. Um, while I was mobilized there, though, I, I really did miss it. Um, and his job had changed, and I was like, I really just need to come back into this army. I miss this camaraderie. I miss working. I miss seeing soldiers. Um, and at that point, I worked really hard with the recruiter, and I came back on. Um, and that's when the Army got me, because they sent me to Fort Sill, Lawton, Oklahoma. And I know you like it, Colonel Bryden, but um, it was not the, the best place after being in Hawaii and, you know, Colorado. But, um, but then the Army did a funny trick. They didn't realize that 18 months as a reservist really mattered now that I was on active duty. So then a year later, they sent me for 15 months to Iraq. Um, so then I left my husband again with two little girls and a two-year-old son. So while missing my family, the bond you create with your fellow, I can't look at you guys. (laughs) Um, The bond you create with those fellow soldiers is indescribable. They really do become your other family. So while they never replace your immediate family, they are so much different and so much, I just can't, like I said, I can't even describe. But our time in Baghdad was rough. We had a lot of sorrow, but we also had a lot of fun. Um, And I do have three of my kids here. And I, oh, I just appreciate so much that you guys came. Oh. Where's Cardenas? He said he was going to yell at me if I started crying. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to, okay. Whew. Okay. So again, I cannot express how honored and excited I am to have you three here today. Um, then move, you know, move forward. I'm not going to sit here and talk about every post, but in 2014, I went to Afghanistan, and that was another wild ride. And I actually have people here that I went to Afghanistan with too. And we deployed with the British at that point, and that was a whole nother um, experience. Um, Unfortunately, we went to Europe a month before we were really supposed to. (laughs) So we had a lot of fun that that month before we deployed. Um, But we were there when we closed down Ibn Sina, and then most everybody else came home, but they needed a group to go down to southern Afghanistan and start this... um, bring back an FRST back up, and I was stuck. Oh, I think we volunteered, didn't we, Newfie? Yeah, we volunteered. Um, Mike Newfeld's in the audience. He's one of the ER docs or ER nurses that I uh, took with me, and we went down there and it got extended for several more months. Then I went to Fort Knox, where I had the privilege of being with Cadet Command and working. I, someone here from Fort Knox is here as well. Um, But we brought in Army Nurse Corps officers through ROTC. And the fact that I had just a small piece in bringing in nurses that are going to be our future is is awesome. Um, And the brigade nurse counselors that I worked with were great. Um, Then I came back to Texas where we did multiple things, but I had the privilege of ending my career as the director of the Directorate of Training and Doctrine, which... As General Talley said, um, I had a division that wrote doctrine, a division that did lessons learned, and then multiple divisions that worked on training products, um, all the curriculum for all the um, classes that are taught here at Army Medicine. Um, And one of my proudest moments is getting um, the 68 Whiskey, which is an Army combat medic, getting their, their curriculum changed 
um, doing some things and adding some things to get ready for this next war. Um, it's going to be different. Well, what old is new again, right, sir? Um, back more to the World War time, World War II type training, um, large scale combat operations, and so we have to to change how we train. And so it was a a great way to end my career, um, impacting now not only the nurses like I did at Cadet Command, but impacting every soldier that comes through um, Fort Sam Houston. Okay, so now real quick, I need to thank my family. Being in the military, I know it wasn't easy. Lots of long days, night shifts, time spent apart, so many missed events. I was lucky and blessed to find Jim. He is prior Navy, as you heard, so he understood the military, and I think that really was um, what helped because when I wanted to do things, he knew it. When I would question things, he pushed me. Um, he's always been supportive of the decisions I've made along the way. And again, he definitely earned that combat pay that I received. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how much I love you and I appreciate you for supporting me through this journey. To my kids, Hannah Macy Cooper. I know having a military mom isn't easy. We didn't necessarily move every two to three years like other families, but there were many nights when you had to go to bed without your mom around. I missed a lot of events with you. Birthdays, holidays, school events, I'm so proud of all of you. Every event missed seemed to take a little piece of my heart. <laughs> but when I got home and saw your smiles, got your hugs, and heard I love you, it was whole again. So thank you for that. Oh. To my parents, still in Evie Bolt who hopefully are still listening, um, unfortunately couldn't be here, and I know they really wanted to. I love you both very much. You raised me with love, great Christian values, um, and you never pushed any of us to really go into the military, but somehow I ended up here 30 years later. Thank you both for all your support, prayers, letters, and the best care packages ever. To my siblings, cousins, in-laws, who have so graciously flown here, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means the world that you took the time to come and help me celebrate my retirement. Thank you to all my friends out there, some old, some new, some army, some civilian. Whew, my already retired friends out there, thank you for coming and helping me celebrate this awesome and scary event. Maya Angelou said, people will forget everything you say, people will forget everything you do, but people will never forget how they make you feel. I am honored to have served in the Army, and I hope all of you that I have touched have felt my compassion, my honesty, my pride in wearing this uniform. Conserve the fighting strength, Army Strong. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This, please be seated. <laughs> the 323rd Army Band, Fort Sam's own, led by Staff Sergeant Olek Zek, will now play a retirement medley in honor of Colonel Retired Chapel. Thank you. 
the men and women of the Department of Defense and the United States Army are proud of Colonel Retired Chapel and her family and wish every success to them as they take on new challenges and adventures. Please stand for the playing of the Army song and remain standing for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Please join Colonel Retired Chapel and her family for a reception in the front of the theater following this occasion. Thank you.